Wisdom teeth or the third molars are the last teeth to develop and appear in the mouth. They usually erupt between ages of 17 to 25. After 25 years, they usually don't erupt. A tooth failed to erupt during its development is called an impacted tooth. Impacted wisdom teeth are unable to erupt into the mouth either due to lack of space distal to second molar or due to their position. An impacted wisdom tooth may be painful and can contribute to problems such as infection like pericoronitis, damage to neighboring teeth, tooth decay, a most serious problem such as cystic formation which requires surgery. Few indications for removal of impacted wisdom teeth are recurrent episodes of pericoronitis that is greater than two times, gross caries, untreatable pulpitis, associated pathology for example cyst tumors, jaw surgeries for example osteotomies or orthodontic treatment. Note that if the patient is asymptomatic, no prophylactic removal of wisdom teeth is done. Before removal of wisdom teeth, surgically, preoperative clinical and radiographic assessment are done. General assessment like age, sex, allergies, medical conditions are evaluated. Local assessments like mouth opening, tongue size, alveolar bone thickness, preoperative sensation of lower lip and tongue TC are also evaluated. Clinical assessments of third molars like depth of impaction, angulation, space available distal to second molar are evaluated. Radiographic assessments of third molars such as IOPA, lateral oblique, OPG, CBCT of which IOPA and OPG are the gold standard. IOPA and OPG assess depth of impaction, angulations, ramus relation, winter lines, inferior alveolar knob relationship, crown root configuration, bone quality or any apical or periapical pathology. Before removal, difficulty index is taken based on angulation, ramus relation, winter lines, proximity of inferior alveolar knob, crown root configuration or associated pathology. In proximity of inferior alveolar knob, the tramp line course, radio density change in root or root disfiguration increases the risk of inferior alveolar knob damage. So removal of wisdom tooth is done very carefully or alternative method of removal like coronectomy is preferred these days where only crown portion of the tooth is removed leaving roots inside the socket. In associated pathology, if there is large pericoronal space or associated cystic cavity then these teeth are easy to remove. Patient is prepared mentally and informed consent is taken. Let the patient do mouthwash with an antiseptic like betadine. The chair, light, suction and other instruments should be ready and sterility should be maintained throughout the procedure. We need assistance at the chair side also. The removal of wisdom teeth is done with uh, intravenous sedation that is local anesthesia. The choice of local anesthesia is made for example topical anesthesia, lidocaine anesthesia spray or gel or inferior alveolar knob block, lingual knob block, long buccal knob block or any other such as intraligamentary or intrapulpal. For the removal of wisdom teeth, the type of incision and flap design is selected that is either envelope or one-sided flap or two-sided flap or three-sided flap of which three-sided flap is generally preferred. With the scalpel blade, an incision is made in the gum margin around the second molar tooth. This is continued behind tangentially and the gum tissue is retracted to expose the underlying jaw bone. 
use periosteal elevator and raise mucoperiosteal flap and no mucosal flaps are raised. Raise lingual flap a little and protect lingual knob. After then bone removal is done. The wisdom teeth is then uncovered using a burr and surgical motor. Remove buccal and distal bone. Expose the crown and upper one third of the root. You need good irrigation with normal saline during bone removal. After that tooth sectioning is done. The wisdom tooth is sometimes split it into half with the burr to enable easier re retrieval with an instrument called an elevator. Remember no forceps delivery is done because it might damage inferior alveolar nerve. You can make drill hole to get point of application and easier retrieval with elevator. Then wound conditioning is done. The bony crypts that house the wisdom tooth is then cleaned with saline water. Finally suturing and dressing is done. The gum flap is laid back and suture are used to hold it in place. Generally 2 to 3 sutures which are non-absorbable 3-0 silk suture cutting or round bodied are preferred. No vertical incision suturing is required as it will use as drain port. Keep antibiotic gauze back with pressure for at least 10 minutes. Now post operative instructions are given which should be strictly followed by the patient. First is strict resting for 24 hours, second is no hot drinks or hot meals for 24 hours, next is no gargling of mouth for 24 hours, next is no smoking or no alcohol for 3 days, next is no insertion of foreign bodies, next is take soft diet, another is keep ice pack in jaw and the last one is use 0.2% chlorhexidine mouthwash 2 times a day for 7 to 10 days. Now antibiotics and analgesics. Study shows that no need of antibiotics but it's in doctor's hand if there is an absolute indication then antibiotics can be prescribed but analgesics are prescribed for one day then SOS. Thank you for watching this is dental guide and please subscribe our channel for more updates.